Ever wondered how much power you'd need in a blackout? It's not as daunting as it sounds. Let's dive right in. Understanding your energy needs is a lot like meal planning. You need to know what you're cooking, the ingredients required, and how much of each you'll need. Similarly, the first step in planning for power outages is assessing your energy consumption and determining your critical needs. Think about the essential devices and appliances in your home. This could be your refrigerator, where you store food and medicine or your heating system that keeps your home warm in winter. Each device has a specific power requirement, usually measured in watts, which you can typically find on the manufacturer's label or in the user manual. Once you've listed these devices, it's time to calculate their power requirements. Here's how it works. If your refrigerator uses 75 watts and runs 24 hours a day, that's 1,800 watts or 1.8 kilowatts a day. Do the same for all your essential devices and you've got your daily power requirement. But remember, not all devices run all day. Your microwave, for example, may only be in use for 15 minutes a day. So make sure you calculate usage based on the actual operating time. Also, consider the difference between running and starting wattage. Some devices, like refrigerators and air conditioners, need extra power to start up. This is usually two to three times their running wattage. So you'll need to factor this in when calculating your power needs. And finally, keep in mind that it's always better to overestimate your energy needs. This gives you a buffer for unexpected power requirements or new devices you might add in the future. Knowing your energy needs is the first step towards self-sufficiency. And it's a step you can take right now. So go ahead, start calculating and power up your survival game. Now that you know your energy needs, let's explore some off-grid power solutions. First off, we have solar panels. These sleek, shiny arrays are nature's gift to off-gridders. Solar panels harness the sun's radiant energy and convert it directly into electricity. They're clean, silent, and require minimal maintenance once installed. Plus, they're scalable. You can start with a small setup and expand as your needs and budget allow. The downside? Solar panels are heavily dependent on sunlight. They're less effective on cloudy days and they don't produce power at night. Therefore, if you're considering solar power, it's crucial to have an efficient energy storage system in place. Next up, wind turbines. If you live in a windy area, this could be a great solution for you. Wind turbines generate electricity by converting the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy. They can produce power day and night, weather permitting. Wind energy is also a renewable, clean source of power that can reduce your carbon footprint. But like solar panels, wind turbines have their limitations. They require a consistent wind speed to operate efficiently, and they can be noisy. Also, depending on local regulations, there may be restrictions on the height or number of turbines you can install. Lastly, let's talk about generators. Generators can be divided into two categories, portable and standby. Portable generators are smaller, more affordable, and can be moved around to where they're needed. They're great for temporary power outages or for powering specific appliances or tools. Standby generators, on the other hand, are larger, more powerful, and are permanently installed. They automatically kick in when the power goes out, providing seamless, uninterrupted power. The downside? Generators run on fuel, gasoline, diesel, or propane. This means they're not as eco-friendly, and you'll need a steady fuel supply to keep them running. Plus, they can be noisy and require regular maintenance. So how do you choose between solar panels, wind turbines, and generators? It depends on your location, budget, and energy needs. If you live in a sunny region with less wind, solar panels might be your best bet. If you're in a windy area, a wind turbine could be a great complement to your solar setup. And if you need a reliable, uninterruptible power supply, consider investing in a standby generator. Remember, you don't have to choose just one. Many off-gridders use a combination of these power solutions to ensure they always have electricity when they need it. Choosing the right power solution depends on your location, budget, and energy needs. So, consider your options carefully, do your research, and make an informed decision that best suits your survival strategy. Generating power is only half the battle. Let's talk about storing that energy for when you need it most. So, you've harnessed the power of the sun, the wind, or maybe even a generator. Great! But the real question is, where do you keep all that energy until it's needed? That's where battery banks come in. Think of them as giant power banks for your off-grid system. They store the energy produced by your power source and then distribute it as needed, like during the night or on cloudy days. 
Choosing the right batteries for your setup is crucial. There are several types of batteries you can use, but the most common ones are lead acid and lithium ion batteries. Lead acid batteries are often more affordable and widely available. However, they require regular maintenance and tend not to last as long as their lithium ion counterparts. On the other hand, lithium ion batteries are more expensive, but they're also more efficient, require less maintenance and have a longer lifespan. Now, when we say maintenance, we don't mean just dusting them off every once in a while. Batteries can be dangerous if not handled properly. So here are a few safety tips to keep in mind. First, batteries should be stored in a well-ventilated area to prevent the buildup of dangerous gases. Second, always use protective gear like gloves and safety glasses when handling batteries. Lastly, make sure to regularly check your batteries for any signs of damage or wear, like bulging, leaks, or corrosion. Beyond safety, proper maintenance can also extend the life of your batteries. For lead-acid batteries, this means regularly checking and refilling the water levels. For lithium-ion batteries, it's all about protecting them from extreme temperatures and overcharging. And for all batteries, making sure they're fully charged before storing them can prevent damage and ensure they're ready to go when you need them. So, we've covered the basics of battery banks, how to choose the right batteries for your needs, and some maintenance and safety tips. But remember, every setup is unique, and what works for one person might not work for another. The key is to understand your energy needs, do your research, and don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. And that's it for energy storage. It might sound complicated, but trust me, once you've got it down, it's a game changer. Being able to store your own power means you're not at the mercy of the grid, and that's a pretty empowering feeling. Properly storing energy ensures you have power when you need it, day or night. So, stay tuned for our next segment, where we'll be diving into some energy conservation tips to help you get the most out of your off-grid system. Conserving energy is just as important as generating it. This statement holds true, whether you're living off-grid or simply trying to lower your energy costs. Let's delve into some ways you can do this. First up, we have lighting. Switching to LED lighting can make a significant difference in your energy bills. LEDs use up to 80% less energy than traditional light bulbs, and they last up to 25 times longer. This means you'll be saving energy and money on replacements. Now let's talk about appliances. These are often the biggest culprits when it comes to energy use. Look for appliances with an Energy Star rating. These are designed to be more efficient, using less power to do the same job. And remember, even when turned off, many appliances still drain power. Unplug them when not in use to avoid this phantom load. Next, let's discuss insulation. A well-insulated home can save a lot of energy by reducing the need for heating and cooling. Insulation works by trapping air, creating a barrier between the inside and outside of your home. This keeps the warmth in during winter and the heat out during summer. Finally, consider your everyday habits. Simple things like turning off lights when you leave a room, air drying clothes instead of using a dryer, or using a toaster oven instead of a full-size oven for small meals can all add up to significant energy savings. And remember, these tips aren't just for those living off the grid. Energy conservation benefits everyone by reducing our carbon footprint and saving us money. It's a win-win. Remember, every bit of energy saved is energy you can use later. So, whether you're preparing for a grid-down scenario or just looking to reduce your energy bills, these tips can help you make the most of your power. Up next, we'll dive into some DIY renewable energy projects that you can tackle at home. Stay tuned. Feeling handy? Let's dive into some DIY projects for renewable energy. Rolling up your sleeves and doing it yourself isn't just a way to save money. It's about gaining valuable skills that can boost your self-sufficiency, especially when the going gets tough. First off, let's talk about building a simple solar oven. This project can be a fun and educational activity for the whole family. The materials you need are readily available and affordable. You'll need a cardboard box, some aluminum foil, a piece of glass or clear plastic, and black paint. First, paint the inside of the box black to absorb heat. Then, line the inside of the box's lid with aluminum foil to reflect sunlight into the box. Finally, place the glass or clear plastic over the opening to trap heat inside. Voila! You have a solar oven that can reach temperatures high enough to cook food or boil water. This project demonstrates the power of the sun and how it can be harnessed for practical use. Now let's shift gears a bit and discuss DIY wind turbine projects. Wind energy can be an excellent supplemental power source, especially in areas where wind is abundant. 
Building a wind turbine may sound intimidating, but basic models can be assembled using simple materials like PVC pipes for the blades, a motor to generate electricity, and a sturdy mount to hold everything in place. The wind turns the blades, which spin the motor, generating electricity. This power can be stored in a battery for later use, or used immediately depending on your setup. The benefits of these DIY projects extend beyond just saving money. They provide a sense of accomplishment and self-reliance that's invaluable in a survival situation. Plus, they offer a hands-on understanding of how renewable energy works, which can be an empowering learning experience. It's important to remember, however, that while these projects are great for supplementing your energy needs, they might not be able to cover all your power requirements. Solar ovens and small wind turbines can't power your entire home, but they can certainly help reduce reliance on traditional power sources. In the grand scheme of things, mastering these skills could make a world of difference when it comes to surviving off the grid. They not only give you more control over your energy resources, but also broaden your knowledge base and skill set. So why not give these projects a try? You might surprise yourself with what you can accomplish. And who knows, you might even inspire others in your community to hop on the renewable energy train too. These DIY projects not only save you money, but also increase your survival capabilities. Whether it's cooking a meal in a solar oven or harnessing the wind to charge your devices, remember that every step you take towards energy independence is a step towards a more resilient future. Creating a resilient and self-sufficient energy system at home is easier than you think. You see, staying energized is not about having the most advanced technologies or the biggest budget. It's about understanding your energy needs, finding the right solutions, and making smart choices. Let's take a quick stroll down memory lane. We've talked about assessing your energy consumption and identifying the essential devices that need power. It's not about having all the luxuries, but about ensuring the necessities are taken care of. We then delved into off-grid power solutions, discussing the merits of harnessing the sun's power with solar panels, capturing the wind with turbines, and the good old reliable generators. Each has its pros and cons, so what matters most is choosing what suits your situation best. We also tackled energy storage systems, focusing on battery banks. Remember, storing energy is just as important as generating it. The right batteries can keep your lights on during nighttime or cloudy days, and knowing how to maintain them can significantly extend their life. Speaking of lights, we shared some energy conservation tips too. Switching to LED lighting and energy-efficient appliances can drastically reduce your power consumption. And don't forget the importance of insulating your home and developing practical habits to limit electricity use. And for the hands-on folks, we introduced some renewable energy DIY projects. Building a simple solar oven or a DIY wind turbine can be a fun and rewarding experience, not to mention a practical one. So you see, taking control of your energy needs doesn't require a revolution. It's about taking small, consistent steps towards energy independence. Every solar panel installed, every LED light bulb switched, every energy-efficient habit formed, they all add up. Stay prepared and remember, every little step towards energy independence counts. Subscribe for more insights and share your experiences or questions below. Until next time, keep the lights on.